Good morning, Westside. Thank you for joining us for Sunday morning worship. Please stay tuned for some important announcements immediately following the service.
bless his holy name. For those of us who know him, he has always shown himself mighty. He has always shown himself strong. He has always shown himself awesome. And at such a time as this, he continues to show himself, for he is, as his father said, his father is the great I am. And Jesus followed in his father's footstep and said many times, I am, I am that I am. We bless the name of God. We thank you for joining us. Uh, for those that uh, have taken time to continue in their service of the Lord, we thank you here at Westside, uh, as well as all across the nation, as many have joined into us, uh, to, with us. We look now to our scripture as we go to our call to worship today. That scripture was coming from John, St. John, the 11th chapter. We're going to read 11 verses. We're going to start at John 11. We're going to start at 35 and read through 45. St. John 11, 35 through 45, and it reads as follows. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, Come, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see, you would see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed in him. Many of the Jews who came saw these things and believed in him. We believe today, and we have not seen him face to face, but the scripture says the day shall come when we will know as we are known, and we will see him face to face. Let us pray. As has already been sung, we come before you, bowed down heads, Heavenly Father, saying, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise, because even as we've read this scripture, Lord, once again, you said you are the resurrection, but you also said you are the life. So, Lord, we look forward to the day when we shall see you, and we, I, we shall be res resurrected. We will have our glorified body. But not only will we be resurrected, but we will have life eternal. So, Lord, we come before you right now, first of all, to say we adore and magnify and lift up your holy, righteous, and perfect name. And, Lord, as we come to adore you, we also recognize you died. You paid a sin debt that you didn't owe. We owed the debt, and yet you paid it and gave it to our account. So, Lord, we confess even now, as the word said, we are to confess our sins. For, Lord, you are faithful and just that you have already forgiven us, for you died once for all. And, Lord, it said you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So right now, Lord, we are give great thanks for that uh, act that you have done on our behalf. So we thank you, Lord, for, for that day and every day since. Lord, we even thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for this time of worship. We thank you for, for those that have sacrificed time, effort, talent, and the gifts that you've given them, Lord, that they now place now at the foot of the cross because you are worthy to receive everything. So, Lord, we come now thanking you, Lord, for those who are present here today. We pray for our pastor, Lord, as he breaks the word of life, Lord, that we all might uh, once again be rejuvenated, 
Lord, knowing that, Lord, in the midst of it all, that you are still God and there is nothing that you cannot do. So thank you for taking us through this, uh, this time and through every time. We pray now, Lord, for Dr. Bradley and for those that, Lord, who bring the music even yet today, choirs, ministries of all types that are present here at this time. Now be with us, Lord. Now have your way in this place. And as always, be reckless, Lord, in the praise of you. In Jesus' name, we pray and give all thanks. And everyone together at home or otherwise said, amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow, come on. Let's just give God praise right where you are. Come on, right where you are. Home. Just open your mouth and tell the Lord how much you love him, how much you honor him, how much you adore him. We bless you, Lord, this morning. Matter of fact, right in the chat, why don't you just tell the Lord thank you. Just praise the Lord for how good he's been. Right there in the chat, just tell the Lord, thank you for how you covered me all week long. Lord, I thank you for how you've been a provider. Lord, I thank you for how you've been a protector. Lord, I thank you how you made a way out of no way. Lord, I thank you how you've been covering me all week long. Lord, I thank you for how good you've been. Father, we bless your name this morning. this morning said praise him Jesus blessed Savior he's worthy how many know the Lord is worthy this morning hallelujah right at home just lift your hands and say praise him come on choir
has done much for all of us. He has done much for all of us. We thank God for all he has done. Day and night, while we yet slumber and sleep, the word says he neither slumbers nor sleeps, but his compassions and mercies are new every day. Despite the fact that we are not all in the building together, there is no reason why we still can't praise his name, for he has shown himself mighty and strong for over these past seven, eight, nine, ten months, whatever it's been. 
we are still here and it's only because of him let us look to our pulpit notes this morning some things that we need to be reminded of and uh, when I read this first note about the prayer that continues here at Westside and prayerfully at all churches open in his name makes me think of uh, Luke 18 1 when uh, Luke said Jesus said that man ought to pray always pray always and it said and faint not that's right and not lose heart so we bless his name that we still have prayer and we can still talk to the one who to whom we owe it all on Monday evenings we still have our shop the sweet hour of prayer that'll be at 7 p.m. and it's uh, it's been ongoing for some time and uh, you can check the uh, the website and get the information for calling in and being a part of that so many of the ministries here have done an excellent job of facilitating that in addition to that on Wednesday mornings at 6 a.m. we also have others who have joined us uh, and we reiterate part of what was done on the Sunday and adult Sunday morning Bible study our youth studies and we uh, we pray again for man ought to pray always always and cease not we thank God for all the technology we have our zoom continuing for our ministry meetings uh, for our choir rehearsals etc uh, that also be found on our website and on the, uh, the Facebook pages all those announcements and also one very very dear to my heart adult Sunday morning Bible study continues on zoom and we want to thank all the teachers and all the attendees for uh, continuing to show themselves that they love the Lord by attending zoom classes on Sunday mornings uh, thirdly we have had a tremendous time of revival despite the fact that we could not get together here at the church itself god gave us again the zoom technology and we heard some great messages from all across the country and some great singers so we thank god for that three weeks that we have had of revival and we pray that uh, that you tuned in and in fact recognize that we are still here god can revive us through anything with COVID or whatever the last thing I want to mention is the fact that uh, our very own minister Val Pagan will be preaching on October 28th this next Wednesday and those of us who have known uh, Minister Pagan for a while know he loves the Lord very studious and we look forward to, uh, to, zo to zooming in with him this coming Wednesday night to, uh, to enjoy that first sermon when pastor has ha asked him to stand so we thank pastor and we thank pa uh, minister Val Pagan for his obedience we lift God up and bless your whole Holy name. I am a, uh, uh, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan and I'm a Texas Longhorn. And so I've been looking for a place to celebrate victory. And so when I get to church and I get to talking about Jesus being a blessed Savior, I, 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 I know it's announcement time, but look like we all just have an announcement. We ought to announce that we are victorious. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We put up with craziness everywhere else, but when we come here, we just ought to thank him. Jesus, that blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, you are so worthy to be praised. Old folk where I'm from, you say, I just woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and I'm talking. With my mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. Thank you, music ministry. Thank you, Reverend Marshall. Uh, what a joy it is to join you, West Side, worldwide. And as he has said, I am so excited. We have been blessed these three weeks uh, by revival, and uh, what what an amazing time. Uh, I celebrate again uh, the ministry team here, our staff, for leading us in creativity. We were able to bring in preachers from across the country. We had the very best psalmist to come in and to minister, and people from around the country came and blessed us. And thank you in a very special way, Dr. Carter, for this past week. 
Dr. Jerry Carter. And as I said, if you ever hear Jerry handle a text, you will leave with a greater appreciation for it. I'm excited because the next Sunday, on the first Sunday, we're going to meet in the parking lot, and I'll get a chance to see you. Amen. Amen. Going to have a 9 o'clock parking lot service. I'm excited, and we're going to serve communion. Now, those of you who watch us on Westside Worldwide and don't get to attend, I invite you to remember on first Sunday is the Dress Up Sunday, so uh, you, you get up and dress up with us, and you get to watch us. And it's such a blessing because we're going to have communion. As I travel now and from time to time, and people will either see me in a place or they'll uh, talk to me on Facebook. I met a lady, and uh, Deanna, I'm not going to put your name out there and tell you what. She said, the other day y'all were having communion. She said, I looked around the house and I didn't have any grape juice. She said, we didn't have any wine in the house. She said, all I had was some big red. And I prayed over that big red and uh, blessed it and gave it to the children with some crackers. And they say, uh, she said, they asked her, I said, what is this? She said, that's the blood, that's the blood. <laughs> so, so thank you for having communion with God can bless Big Red, amen, amen. I will never drink Big Red to say, amen. So I thank you, I thank you for that interaction. And for those of you who watch us who are part of Westside Worldwide, so on next Sunday we'll have our parking lot service and then on the 4th for Westside members exclusively, like American Express membership has its privileges. I just kind of want to have a fireside chat with you, just an uh, update to let you know where we are, uh, how we've been doing in this time that we've not been away. And each member, you should get an email, and there's an email coming to you, or you'll be getting a text, and it'll give you the information where you can sign on. And for those of you who watch Westside Worldwide, we will have a worship service for you, and so we'll have a worship service for you. I'm excited that this Wednesday, Brother Val is going to be doing his first sermon, and you are going to be blessed. I have the privilege whenever... Um, uh, members say the Lord has called them, and I pray that God, I believe God is still calling people to the ministry. I think that there's no higher calling, and he's going to be bringing that lesson. I want to encourage you, those of you, as we prepare for Thanksgiving, you know each year we give Thanksgiving baskets, and Uncle Lou and the team have been preparing, and this year they've got food for those families. If you'll call to the church, we have food for you, and there's a gift card that goes with the food this year. I want to encourage you to do that. You know, it's time to vote, and we are on our way to heaven. But before we get to heaven, we got to live on earth. And I'm encouraging you to vote, and I'm encouraging you to vote early. I used to have a saying in Chicago that said, vote early and vote often. But here, we just want you to vote early. We want to make sure you vote. People ask me about voting, and uh, I was sharing with one of my, my brothers uh, who does not bear the burden of an ebony hue. He said, you know, uh, how do you talk to your people about voting? I said, usually the difference between me and you is you tell your people to vote their convictions. I tell my people to vote their convictions, and then I tell them what their convictions are. Uh, I, I want you to make sure you vote. And, and my, my attitude about voting is like this, because some people you can't talk to, they want to fight, get upset, and I want to know why they're so angry. Uh, if you like the way things are, then you vote to keep them that way. If you think, if you want to change things, then you vote to change them. If you think they can be better, you vote to change them. I am convinced that conduct, character, competency and compassion uh, all go into play when you pick who's going to lead you. I insert amen. You need to chat that. Conduct, competency, character, and uh, compassion all make a difference. And I want a leader that possesses those. And so uh, you be governed by who uh, you pick to lead you. Amen? I don't want anybody to lead me who I can't trust in the room with my wife or my daughters. Amen. Amen, Brother Pastor. Those are my convictions. All right, let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. And I need to say this, because I'm like this you know, about my Facebook, and I might not ought to make you mad before you give, but if me telling the truth stops you from being my friend, we weren't friends to start with. Amen. 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 I tell... Folk on Facebook, I got 5,000. If you want to 
Block me, go ahead. Block me, I need some space. A amen. I need some space. I got, I got room. Amen. We're, we're getting ready to give. Now listen, I want to thank you for your gifts, and I want you to continue to commit to give. We continue to need your support as we prepare again to even imagine more uh, as just to maintain the week. This, this, this congregation has done an amazing job, and I want to thank you and encourage you to continue to give. We, we don't just give because the church needs us to give. We give because God said we're supposed to. We give out of obedience. We give because it's right. If the church had all the money that she needed, I'd still give because I give out of a grateful heart to a God who told me to. And we've made it convenient for you to give. You're able to give on our website, wbcchurch.org forward slash give. You're able to text and give. Text WBC Church to 77977. You're able to give on the app, on both the uh, Apple and on uh, Google, and you're able to mail checks in at 900 Bel Air Boulevard in Louisville, Texas, 75067. Thank you for your continued giving. We praise God. I tell you, I get so excited uh, whenever this music ministry sings, and I, I don't care if we have four or uh, uh, eight, however many, it sounds like a thousand of them up there. They blessed us. I saw them during the revival. They were so cute all over my pulpit, just singing, looking like they were on Bobby Jones or some new show. Y'all, they sing with everything in them. Now, when they start singing, you've got some time. I just want you to put in the little chat box to text, whatever you do. Just say, sing choir. If you know somebody up there, shout them out because they'll, they'll be blessed. Receive now our music ministry. Praise the Lord. Just before we get started to do our song this morning, I would just like to thank Pastor and the church for the celebration on last week. Thank you, Dr. Atchison. Thank you and the West Side Baptist Church, the music ministry, the committee. Just thank you so much. People don't have to be nice to you, but when they are nice, you ought to tell them thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you to West Side and thank you, Pastor Atchison, for being a shining light in the Louisville area. Hallelujah. Talk on. Talk on. All right, let's give God Thank a hand clap. Of praise. Somebody. Thank you for being somebody worth celebrating. Amen. Amen. You're going to be here a long time talking like this. Let's stand. You should be a witness.
should be a witness. Stand up and, and be a witness. So it, whenever the choir is singing, and I, I always want a little bit more. Dr. Bradley is telling me to come on up, but I know it ain't it ain't coming up time. Amen. We, we still got some shout left in us. Amen. I'm I'm too old a cat to let a kitten scratch me. Amen. So when they, when they Amen. What a joy it is. Thank you so much, Westside Worldwide, for joining us as we as you allow us again to come to your home and you get to worship with us. I want to offer something I uh, my my opportunity to pastor uh Westside Worldwide, we have grown in our viewership exponentially, and we thank you. We don't take this lightly, and so those of you who uh, each Sunday you start your watch party and you have people who sign up, and you in essence become stewards, what the pandemic has done is it has in essence really changed the way that we church. It's changed the way that we church, and some people are waiting for the pandemic to be over to make those adjustments. But if you're waiting for the pandemic, you are wasting the pandemic. And I think we ought to take full advantage while we are in this season to make some adjustments to how we disciple, how we lead. And the truth of the matter is, is that what the Lord has allowed the pandemic to do is to allow us, like in the early church, to make each home a house church. You, you are a part of our church, but you are a church unto yourself. And God is inviting us, while we are churching at home, to be responsible for discipleship, for growing, for helping others. One of the great invitations I think that we have as believers in Christ is that God invites us to participate in the resurrective and redemptive work that he does in the life of a believer. I think I ought to say that again. That God could save the whole world by himself but once he saves you, he uses you as an instrument to help save other people. And the good news of the gospel and, and what, I, what I hope to accomplish as we continue this series in, men, in miracles, but, but also make this adjustment for ministry, is for us to understand that God invites believers to participate in both redeeming and releasing the people he has resurrected. That God could do it all by himself, but you and I, today, we get to participate in the resurrection. And I'm, I'm excited. This is kind of a pastoral lesson, so I get to pastor these 3,000 people who are going to be listening to me today, and we're going to make an impact. We're going to change the way we minister to our family members, to the people at our job, because we get to participate in resurrection. Reverend Marshall read it for us, and I just want to pick out three verses from the narrative found there, this miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus. I just want to look at three verses. John, the 11th chapter, verse 34. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Verse 44. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. The grass withers and the flowers thereof faded away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. God invites believers to participate in the redemptive process by releasing those he has resurrected. I, I, I wanted to shout because I think I said something. You, you, you need to chat that, type that, that, that you and I have been invited by God to participate in the whole redemptive process because we get to release the people he's resurrected. 
What, what are you talking about, Pastor? I'm so glad you asked. This story about Jesus and his friends. Bethany for Jesus was Jesus' go-to place. It was a place where Jesus could just let his hair down. It was his chill spot. Jesus, in the 11th chapter of John, Jesus gets a message from Martha and Mary, his friends, about their brother Lazarus. And they send the message to Jesus that Lazarus is sick. Now, from Martha and Mary, they kind of show us how we can participate in the resurrection process. It's, we can just walk through it. Because they, uh, first of all, they, they have a desire. And, and, and if we're going to change the world, it begins with the desire. My pastor, Pastor A.C. Stapleton, and I never miss an opportunity to call his name so you can tell him that he was mentioned in the sermon. My pastor says that if you want to do better, everything in life begins with a desire. That if you're going to do better, you got to want to. And I like what they did because Martha and Mary, they first of all identify that there is this problem. And when they identify that there is this problem, they send for Jesus. And I need to tell you, it's interesting that when they contact Jesus, their brother is sick. But by the time Jesus gets there, he's going to be dead. And I need to suggest to somebody that, let me just give you some help, that, that if you are dealing with a dead situation, it, it, it's, it's a good thing to get Jesus involved. You, you, you can tell a situation is dead because usually uh, dead situations, uh, p- people, uh, situations that are dead lack appetite. Uh, they lack activity and, 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 and they lack advancement. So if it's been kind of in the same place, you soon discover that the only difference between a rut and a grave is the length. And anybody who stays in a rut long enough, it becomes a grave. But, 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 but they identify. And if we are going to be a part of resurrection, we got to be able to identify. They send a message to Jesus because their brother is sick and they understand it's something that they can't handle by themselves. But y'all, not only is their desire one where they identify this identification, but, but then there's intercession. Here, here, is, here, here is a shout for me in the text. Most of the time when we think of evangelism, we think of telling people about Jesus. But true evangelism is two-sided. We don't just tell people about Jesus, but we tell Jesus about people. Preach, Pastor. Notice what they send to Jesus. It's a simple message. They say, Lord, the one you love is sick. They send this message because they understand that it is not just enough for us to tell people about Jesus, but we need to have a list of people that we are talking to Jesus about daily. When we have identified within our lives, within our circle, within our sphere of influence, the people who need to be saved, we need to start talking to Jesus about them. We need to pray for them. And I need to tell you that there are those of us who are here who will testify that the reason we are here is not because we went to Sunday school. It's not because we did all the right stuff. It's not because we didn't mess up. It was because when we tried to do the worst we could, somebody kept our name before the Lord. That there were people who were praying for us when we did, when we weren't ready to die and we weren't fit to live. They were praying for us. When we thought we were getting away with stuff and, 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 and thought we had it all down together, they kept our name before the Lord. And some of us are being blessed right now by prayers that our grandmothers and grandfathers put up and lay away. That the reason you're here today is that when death tried to get you last month, God reached up and got that prayer that Mama Sarah, uh, Aunt Lucy had put up and covered you because he kept a covenant promise with them. They identified that there's a problem, but then they interceded. It's interesting to me, and I I want to ask you this. If all the people you prayed to be saved were saved tonight, how many people would that be? We've talked about them. Matter of fact, we've talked to them. But have we talked to the Lord about them? I dare you to put them before the Lord. Lord, the one whom thou lovest is sick. And you know what's interesting to me? I want to so live that when somebody prays for me, 
they can tell Jesus I'm somebody he loves. They, they just said, the one you love is sick. Text says a word about their desire, but then the text says a word about the delay. Jesus says, Lazarus is sick, and the Bible says he tarries. He, he, he waits an additional amount of time. He waits until he knows Lazarus is dead. And Jesus delays, and I need to tell you something about whenever we have divine delays, divine delays are designed both to test us and to teach us. You see, Jesus waits and says, Lazarus sleeps. And they say, well, that's good. Let's not bother him, the disciples say. He said, no, Lazarus is dead. And Thomas, which should have been a foreshadowing of what Thomas would say later, says when Jesus says, let's go after he dies, Thomas said, well, I guess we'll go die with him. What Jesus was doing was Jesus was testing their ability to wait on him But he was going to teach them about the rewards of waiting on him. The Jews had a belief that the spirit hung around the body for three days. So that when Jesus delays his going, when he arrives, it's the fourth day. So they won't think that this is a resuscitation. They will know it is a resurrection. Teach. DA, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. So he tarries that. And I need to tell you that whenever God has a divine delay, you need to understand, don't trip on him because God only knows time by its creation, not its limitation. That the reason God doesn't have to have an emergency is we get in emergencies, we get in a hurry because some stuff may go wrong that by the time we get there, we can't fix it. But God doesn't have to rush because whatever goes wrong, when he gets gets there, he's able to fix it. When I was a boy, they used to say, now see, I had planned on teaching y'all trying to make me preach this morning. When I was a boy, they used to say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. But when I look at this, Lazarus is dead, look like he's out of time. But what Jesus says is, if you run out of time, when I get there, I'll give you that time back. What he says is, I'll make up the time you lost. If I don't get there when you think I ought to, you just wait on me because I'm going to show you something. You've seen me healed the sick. You ain't seen me raise the dead. And I need you to trust me because if you wait on me, when I get there, I'll show you a part of me you hadn't seen before. He, 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 he delays and, and, and Jesus tarries. And when he waits, he, 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 he shows up and says, now let's go. Jesus moves us from not only the desire, not only the delay, but we get to this point of disappointment. Here comes Jesus. He shows up. And when Jesus shows up, Lazarus is dead, he's been dead, and Martha comes out. Now, I I need to tell you something about their character. Martha was a bit different from Mary. Martha was was busy. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was in the house, Martha was the one cooking. It's natural that Martha would come out first. When you read John 11, they have a group of people with them, and this group of people with them are professional mourners. I think the Jews had a little bit of black people in them. They, they would actually pay people to come cry, that the more you cried at the funeral, the, the more you loved them. Oh, pull them out the coffin. Oh, Lord. Oh, come on. I'm not, I know I'm not the only one that's been around. I'll never forget. I got ready. We were getting ready to do a funeral, and uh, the lady said, I already know I'm going to cry with my mom, but I done been practicing. Okay. So, so when, when they come, Martha runs out, and Martha meets Jesus and says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. She, she, says, she says, Lord... I, one almost, one almost gets a sense, a, a, a tinge of sarcasm when they hear, oh, you're going you're gonna to show up now. <laughs> okay. okay. So, well, at least you can go to the funeral with us. If, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died, but since he is dead, oh, that's right, you can't go to the funeral because we've already buried him. Well, I'm glad you're here. And Jesus says to Martha, he says, don't, don't you believe that you're going to see your brother again? And he said, she says to him, I will in the resurrection, in that day that's going to come when God's going to raise everybody up. And what, what Martha's disappointment was, it, it was based out of an ignorance 
because she really didn't know who she was talking to. Now, I'm, I'm married to a grammarian, and, and an English professor, so you, you'll forgive me when I leave this dangling participle here. But what Jesus wants Martha to understand is, Martha, what you talking about, you talking to. Martha, you, you, you talking about the resurrection. Martha, what you're looking for, you're looking at. The reason I stayed, Martha, is because you didn't understand all that I was. You're talking about the time when the resurrection is going to come, but what you don't understand is I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever believeth in me. Martha, I've been with you all this time, and you still don't know who I am. That's what gets me about some of us. We don't realize what we have in Jesus. That's what the choir was singing when they said, show yourself mighty, show yourself strong, show yourself awesome. Even in the midst of a storm, that's what they were saying. We've got a blessed Savior. You've been talking about it. You talking to it. I am the resurrection and the life. And then Mary. Now, now listen. Now, now y'all help me with this. Martha was real active. She was, she was reactionary. Mary was uh, contemplative. She was reflective, kind of quiet. Now, now watch this. You remember when Martha was working, Mary was at the feet of Jesus. John mentions that this is one who would wipe his feet with her hands. She was at his feet worshiping. The Bible says in John 11 that Martha goes and talks to, to, to Mary and, and secretly says to her sister that, that, that the master is here. When Mary comes out, she says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, they are completely different in character, but they come here with the same conversation. Be careful who you listen to when you go through. Because I expected from Martha, but Mary, you were at his feet. You should have known better. And you've got to be careful because when you're going through, other folk will whisper stuff in your ear that you will say and God will have. Jesus has a way of bringing back to us the stuff we say when we find ourselves in those moments like the psalmist, my feet had not slipped. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Martha's disappointment was that she didn't realize all that she had. Mary didn't understand because Mary knew Jesus could heal because nobody had ever died in his presence. But she thought that his power was restricted to his physical presence. And Jesus says, you don't have to see me there just to know that I will be there. If you would have been here, you could handle the sickness. I don't doubt that because they've never been sick, but, but he did. Now, what good are you now? And I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody lets life put you in a situation where you ask Jesus, what good is it now? I'm, 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 I'm at the end. I'm, you can't help me now. If you would have done it a few weeks ago, you, you could have helped me. I'm, I'm in foreclosure now. You, you, can't, you, you can't help me now. We, we already filed the papers in the divorce court. You can't, if you would have been here a little bit earlier, you could have helped me. He, he's in ICU now if you would have got to him before. But I'm here to tell you that even in a dead situation, Jesus is able to fix it. He, 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 when he shows up, he's, he's able to fix it. But now, now Martha's disappointed. Mary's disappointed. But look at Jesus' disappointment. The text says that Jesus groaned twice. It, it, this, this idea of Jesus groaning in spirit. Oh, th th this idea of Jesus. It's, it's an anger almost. It's not just a sadness. It's, it's an outrage. That Jesus gets upset. He looks at the people. Now, now, there are some people when they read that Jesus, when he saw Lazarus die, that, that, that he cried because Lazarus was dead. I find that challenging to believe. And let me push back. Because it didn't make sense for him to cry 
Because when he prayed, he told God, I've already asked you and you told me you're going to raise him. He, it wouldn't make sense to cry over a friend you know God's going to raise back. I think he groans over the people's disbelief. But do you know what I think really hurt Jesus? Jesus doesn't get upset when Martha said something out the way. Because Martha was working while Mary was worshiping. I don't think it bothers Jesus as much when folk who don't worship fall apart. But when you sit at his feet and, 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 and you acknowledge who he is and you still don't believe, Jesus wept not, not over the death of Lazarus, but over the doubt of the people. Jesus wept over their disbelief. Jesus wept over a world that had fallen. He does not cry over death that he's about to conquer. And then I need to tell you, I, I, I really wonder, not if Jesus cried because Lazarus had died, but if he cried because he was about to bring his friend back from a world that knew no suffering. I don't know which hurt Jesus most, that Lazarus left this world or that he was about to call his friend back because where Lazarus was, Lazarus wouldn't have to suffer or get sick anymore. Where Lazarus was, he wouldn't have to pay any more bills. Where Lazarus was, he wouldn't have to doubt. He, he may have been crying that Lazarus, you got to come back and go through some more when I'm bringing you from a world of no more. If I didn't know better, I think I was preaching already. He, he has this... this uh, he, he was bringing his friend back. But, but let me tell you what I've been trying to get. This idea of participating in the resurrection. J Jesus comes, at, and then, th th then th this text says a word about the desire. This text says a word about the delay. This text says a word about the disappointment. But let me say a word about the deliverance. I've, I've been trying to get I just kind of feel like preaching this text a little bit. Th this text says a word about deliverance. First of all, it says a word about the power of the sovereign. It's, it's in the text. Jesus goes and Jesus is here. Let me tell you what I like about Jesus. And, and here's a lesson for us. We do not find Jesus praying in any situation where he is not first thankful. He's just got through crying. There is in him a groaning, a, a, an outrage. A, the, the, the idea in the Greek is of a, a stirring of the spirit. He's, he's a said about a fallen world. He goes to the grave where his friends is, and before he asks God to raise Lazarus, he says, I thank you for what we've already discussed. Let me say this. Jesus shows us that private devotion empowers us for public demonstration. That what we do with God in the private will show up in what we do with God in the public. And that's why I have trouble with people who pray long public prayers. Because if you do long prayers in the private, you don't have to be that long in the public. You, you act like you don't believe me. Jesus is about to call a man from the dead. That's a major thing. But he said, I just want to thank you for what we've already discussed. Now be God. In other words, show yourself mighty right here. So he is thankful. Can I tell you in every situation before I ask you for anything? Thank you, Dr. Bradley. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything. You need to learn how even in your most difficult situation just to say, I thank you because this could be worse. But I thank you because... Here is the shout right here. Lord, I thank you. I got two reasons to thank you. I thank you because it could be worse, but I thank you because I know it's about to be better. I, I thank you because it could be worse, but I thank you because it's going to get better. Right, right now, let me be thankful. But Jesus understands that anybody who is thankful in prayer will be triumphant in prayer because he looks at where Lazarus is and says, Lazarus, come forth. 
he, 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 he says to him, come from death. He doesn't, he doesn't slap Lazarus on top of the head. He doesn't call lightning. He just speaks a word, come forth. And the old preachers where I'm from says that Jesus was so, had so much power in his voice that if he hadn't said Lazarus, everybody in the graveyard would have gotten up. God has that kind of power that he speaks and says, Lazarus, come forth. And even the grave has to obey. But, 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 but y'all, I told you we get to participate. Here's where I wanted to shout. Because we know about the power of the sovereign. We know what he can do with just a word. I, I ought to be able to say that God can change your situation that with, with just one word. And, 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 and at least seven people ought to be chatting. I'm a, I'm a witness that, that, that he can just speak and situation will be changed. We know he got that kind of power, but let me tell you, not just the power of the sovereign, I need to say a word about the participation of the saints. This is where I've been trying to get. That resurrection is whenever we are standing on the other side of what the enemy meant to take us out. Right? Not, 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 not just coming back from the dead. In this case, it is from the dead, but on the other side, it may have been a sickness, may have been the breakup of a relationship, may have been the loss of a job, may have been the death of a loved one, and the enemy thought you would quit, but you made it on the other side, and you are stronger. And so Lazarus is on the other side. Let me tell you, God could do it by himself, but let me show you what he allows us to do. The three verses that I read shows our participation in the process. The first one is one of revelation. He says to them, where have you laid it? Now, Jesus comes and says, now, now notice before he gets there, he says, Lazarus is dead. He says to his disciples, he's dead. I know he's dead. And for your sake, I'm glad because the glory of God is going to be revealed. You know Lazarus is dead. If you know he's dead, you know where he is. But he gets there and says to them, you show me so that you can identify what the problem is. Show me specifically where your situation is. Tell me what your problem is. If you want me to handle it, I want you to identify where have you laid him. Jesus, you must have known you came. You told us he was dead. I know, but I need you to know that I'm the one you told. Uh, so he gets there and he says, where have you laid? And when he gets to the stone, he moves from their revelation to getting them to participation. It's, it's in the text. I ain't even making it up. He gets there. Now you finna call a man back from the dead and you can't move the stone? Any Bible believer knows that Jesus knows something about stone rolling away. He, he could have had those angels who were there who moved his stone to come take this one. But he says, now here's what I'm going to do. He says, here's, here's what he says. He says, what you can do, you do it. Don't ask me to do what you can do. Preach, Reverend. That's why, that's why I have issue with believers. Who, Lord, go by and see the sick. Lord, no, you do that. When you get to where you can't do it, I'll show up and I'll do the rest. And what God is saying to us, Westside Worldwide, is that there's some stuff we can do, and what we can do, we ought to do. He says to them, you roll away the stone, use your power up, and when you can't do anything else, then you get out the way. You move the stone and then move out of the way, because once you're up to your limit, I'll take over. I like that. But God won't give us, uh, God won't give us, uh, his labor when we haven't reached our limitation. You ain't ready yet. Move the stone. But watch this. Here's the shout. Here's the shout in the text. The glorious part of resurrection is this. Watch what Jesus does. They roll with, where have you laid him? Okay, let's go. They say, Lord, he's going to be, you, you, I don't need you to worry about what he's going to be. You just take me the way he is. They get there. When they get there, he says, you roll away the stone. And then he says, Lazarus, come forth. Now, you'd think that would be enough. After he has resurrected Lazarus, he says, your work ain't done. When I was a boy growing up, and I read this text about loose him and let him go, I thought Jesus was talking to the grave clothes. But that's not what the text says. 
The text says he says to them, to the people, I resurrected him. Now here's what I need you to do. Lazarus is not dead, but he's still defeated because he still got on grave clothes. He's been resurrected, but he's still restricted. You, you can start shouting at any, you, you can put that in there. He's, he, 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 he's not dead, but he's still defeated. He's, not, he's been resurrected, but he's still restricted. And Jesus said he's saved, but he's shackled. He, he, he is bought, but he's still bound. What he was saying is that what I want you to do, our job is to take the clothes of the grave, the evidence of what they used to be off people once God has resurrected them. God has raised them, but our job is to help redeem them. That where God God has given resurrection, you and I ought to give liberation. Our job, and in this time of pandemic, in your house, in your circle, in your family cell, you ought to be about the business of liberating people who God has lifted. God could have set him free when he brought him from death and the grave. But what he says is, I want to give you a chance to be a part of resurrection because I have resurrected you and you ought to be a part. You waiting to shout. That's, that's the shout right there. That people who God raised, you and I can help redeem. That people who God lift, you and I can liberate. We ought to be about the business of taking off grave clothes. And if you are not careful, you'll spend so much time telling people who come out the grave how they smell, telling them how they look. They've been dead. And since they've been raised from the dead, our job is to help them to look. Jesus says to them, loose him and let him go. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm through. I'm through for real. I'm, I'm through for real. But I need to tell you a story about a man named Kent Brantley. Kent Brantley was a doctor who worked with Samaritan's Purse. He was helping treat uh, the Ebola virus in West Africa when he himself contracted the disease. Kent Brantley came back. They uh, used Kent Brantley and they began to put some antibodies on him, and his blood developed the antibody. So that Kent Brantley, because he survived the disease, his blood literally became the cure. Because he survived what he had, he became the cure to help other people survive. That it was in his blood to help other people, that, that the way you help people is once you have endured it, you become the antidote to it. That anybody who the Lord has resurrected, anybody who the Lord has redeemed, that you become a part of the solution. That if you've received the salvation, you become a part of the solution. The reason I want to be a part of resurrection is that I've been resurrected. I'm somebody who was dead, but the Lord brought me back. Oh, Kent Brandley, you didn't think I was going to let you just stop talking about you and your blood because one thing I've discovered is that if it's in the blood that does it then there has to be somebody else that once you have come through it you can help others overcome it the reason Jesus says whosoever believeth in me shall not die is because at Calvary Jesus killed death and because of the blood he shed at Calvary that in his blood there is healing that the same Jesus who said if you believe in me shall never die is the one who says I am he who was dead but I am alive forevermore that since Jesus has been resurrected his blood is the solution what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood what can make me whole again nothing but the blood oh precious is that flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. It is nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. All my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other, no other, no other, no other, no other found I know. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know. Yeah. 
want to invite, I want to invite you. I want to invite you for a word of special prayer as they zoom in this camera here. Yeah, I, I want to invite you to ask God to, to use you as an instrument to participate in the resurrection. Now, if you'd like to become a part of our church, we fixed that so that you can go online and join. There's a, going to be a number put up where you can text. You can text that number, and if you text guests, you can join. You can text that number, and to that number, you can text prayer and receive prayer. You can text that number, and, and if you'll just text the word talk, you can talk to a counselor. But I want to challenge you to find somebody in your family to pray for, somebody in your circle of influence to pray for, to ask God to use you as the person who helps the one who has been bought but remains bound, to help those who've been redeemed no longer be restricted. Lord, allow me to be a part of the resurrected process. I challenge you this week to ask God to use you as that vehicle who's going to help to loose them and let them go. Now, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon each of you and give you peace. Go, my family, and the Lord be with you. I'll see you on Wednesday as we celebrate Val's gift. I love you, Westside Worldwide. again for joining us for Sunday morning worship service. And please join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Bible study on YouTube, Facebook, the WBC mobile app, and WBCchurch.org. Have a blessed and safe week, and we will see you Wednesday night.